You know, this is really an interesting six-pack. See how it's completely covered? See the ends? <laughs> covered. Carling Black Label. Since 1840, a Canadian heritage of richer, fuller, bigger beer taste. After 100 years, we formed some pretty strong opinions, especially about making great craft beer. Crack open a cold one and take a trip down memory lane with us as we pour out the top 10 beers from the 60s that you'll definitely remember. Whether they sparked your taste buds at a backyard barbecue or you saw them in the hands of everyone at a local dive bar, these classic brews are sure to stir up some frothy nostalgia. Let's pop the cap off the past and dive into the beers that defined a decade. Bottle of bow, that satisfying flavor of National Bohemian beer. Oh boy, what a beer! National Bohemian, often affectionately called Natty Bow, is a beer deeply rooted in Baltimore's history. Launched in 1885, it became particularly popular in the 60s when the brand was embraced as a symbol of Baltimore's blue-collar ethos. Known for its distinct one-eyed, mustachioed Mr. Bow logos, the beer became a local staple. During the 60s, National Bohemian was not just a beer, it was part of the community. It was the official beer of the Baltimore Orioles, cementing its status in local culture. At this time, an impressive 90% of all beer consumed in Baltimore was National Bohemian, illustrating its dominance in the local market. The brewery was known for its innovations, such as introducing the nation's first six-pack in the 40s, which became a standard packaging practice in the industry. Its catchy slogan, from the land of pleasant living, resonated with consumers who appreciated its light and crisp taste, ideal for the region's hot summers. Despite a decline in popularity and production moving away from Baltimore in the late 90s, National Bohemian maintains a cult following. It's remembered fondly by older generations and still celebrated in Baltimore, especially during Orioles games. Brewed to give you flavor that doesn't fade. First frosty glass to last. Schaefer's brewed for the more than one beer man. The man... F&M Schaefer Brewing Company, once known as America's oldest lager beer producer, was a prominent name in the beer industry in the 60s. Founded in 1842 by Frederick and Maximilian Schaefer, the brewery became synonymous with New York City's bustling social and cultural scene. During the 60s, Schaefer beer was famed not only for its quality, but also for its affordability, making it a popular choice among a wide range of beer drinkers. The brand was particularly known for its catchy advertising slogan, Schaefer is the one beer to have when you're having more than one which resonated with consumers and helped solidify its place in the competitive beer market. Schaefer Brewing also made significant cultural contributions by sponsoring major events. It was notably the sponsor of the Schaefer Music Festival, held annually at New York's Central Park from 1968 to 1976, which featured legendary performers like The Who, Led Zeppelin, and The Doors. This association with music and youth culture helped maintain the brand's relevance during a time of significant cultural shifts in America. Today, while Schaefer beer is still produced, it no longer holds the iconic status it once did. Ball City's a light-bodied beer that's brewed for full flavor. Compare the taste, compare the price, you'll pick a city. Fall City Beer was a popular brand in Louisville, Kentucky, especially throughout the 60s. First brewed in 1905, it quickly became a local favorite due to its strong community ties and aggressive local marketing strategies. During its heyday in the 60s, Fall City Beer was known for its catchy advertising slogans like, Share a Little Happiness, which resonated with consumers. The brand was heavily involved in local events, sponsoring sports teams and community gatherings, which solidified its presence as a community-focused beer. Fall City also gained attention for its innovations in packaging, being one of the early adopters of aluminum cans, which helped maintain beer freshness and made the product more portable. This adaptation was well received because it catered to the growing popularity of outdoor activities and social gatherings. By the late 70s, Falls City Beer had difficulty maintaining its market share, leading to a decrease in production 
and eventually halting operations in 1978. Although the brand was briefly revived in later years, it never regained its former prominence. It's good beer, so they don't want light messing around with it. Well, in that case, why don't we turn off the lights? The Stroh Brewery Company, originating from Detroit, Michigan, was a significant name in the American beer industry during the 60s. Founded by Bernhard Stroh in 1850, the company grew from a small family operation to a national contender in the brewing world. In the 60s, Stroh's was celebrated for its distinctive brewing technique, which involved fire brewing, a method that gave the beer a unique flavor profile. This method was a key selling point, distinguishing Stroh's from other beers in the market. Stroh's popularity was also boosted by savvy marketing strategies. One of the most memorable campaigns was the introduction of the Stroh's Firebrewed beer can, which featured innovative packaging that appealed to a wide range of consumers. The company also sponsored major sporting events and teams, enhancing its visibility and appeal across the United States. By the late 90s, financial struggles led to the sale of Stroh's brands to larger brewing companies. The Stroh Brewery Company ceased operations, marking the end of its brewing legacy. Cried Peels, it's a good drinking beer. Peels, it's a good drinking beer. Peels Beer, once a household name in the New York region, saw its heyday in the 60s. Founded by German immigrants, the Peel Brothers in Brooklyn in 1883, Peels became known for its smooth, easy-drinking lager that was especially popular among the working class. In the 50s and 60s, Peels was renowned not just for its beer, but also for its innovative marketing strategies. The Peels brothers, Bert and Harry, were fictional characters created for radio and television ads, voiced initially by the comedy duo Bob and Ray. These ads captured the audience's attention with humor and down-to-earth appeal, significantly boosting the brand's visibility. Economic pressures and changing ownership in the late 70s further strained the business. The brewery tried various strategies to stay relevant, including updating their brewing techniques and trying new flavors. But these efforts were not enough to sustain the brand against the rising tide of national competition. By the 80s, Peel's beer had largely disappeared from bars and stores, overshadowed by more prominent names. Yes, the happiest taste in beer today. Light, bright, gold and Gunther. When you relax, pour yourself this glass of pleasure. Gunther beer was once a prominent name in the American beer market, particularly in the mid-20th century. Brewed in Baltimore, Maryland, Gunther beer thrived in the 40s and 50s with its catchy slogan, Gunther's got it, suggesting that whatever beer drinkers were looking for, Gunther beer provided it. During the 60s, Gunther beer was known for its light, crisp flavor, appealing to a broad audience. It was especially popular in the Mid-Atlantic region, where it competed with other local brands like National Bohemian. Gunther beer also tried to enhance its appeal with various marketing campaigns and even had its own sponsored TV shows, which was a common practice for breweries at the time to boost brand recognition. Economic pressures and the consolidation trend within the brewing industry led to the decline of Gunther Beer. By the 70s, the brand struggled to maintain its identity and market share, eventually being absorbed by larger beer conglomerates. The original brewery in Baltimore was shut down and production of Gunther Beer ceased. Mabel, black label. Carling's Black Label Beer In a swanky club or the corner pub At bars from border to border Carling Black Label Beer became a household name in America during the 50s and 60s, particularly known for its catchy marketing slogan, Hey Mabel, Black Label. This phrase became embedded in American pop culture, helping to drive the brand's visibility and sales during that era. Originally a Canadian brand, Carling began brewing in the United States in the late 30s, and found significant success in the post-war years. Black Label was marketed as a quality lager at an affordable price, appealing to a broad swath of American beer drinkers. It became especially popular in the Midwest, where it was seen as a working-class beer suited for the blue-collar demographic. 
During the 60s, Carling was one of the top-selling beers in the United States. Its success was propelled by aggressive advertising campaigns that utilized television, a relatively new medium at the time, making Black Label one of the most recognized beers in America. The American beer market became more competitive with the rise of light beers in the 70s and 80s and the later explosion of craft breweries. Carling failed to innovate or effectively adapt to changing consumer tastes, which led to a gradual decline in its popularity. Today, Carling Black Label continues to be brewed, but it is far from the powerhouse it once was in the American beer market. You can't pump a nine in Cincinnati, Kansas City or Tampa Bay. You can't pump a nine too far away from Pittsburgh, PA. Iron City Beer, produced by the Pittsburgh Brewing Company, was a cornerstone of Pittsburgh's brewing scene, particularly in the 60s. Established in 1861, the brewery gained significant traction in the post-war era, becoming synonymous with Pittsburgh's hard-working image. In the 60s, Iron City Beer was at the height of its popularity. It was known for its strong ties to local sports teams, including the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Pirates, enhancing its visibility and local support. The brand was a fixture at games, in bars, and in homes throughout the area, celebrated for its crisp, satisfying flavor that resonated well with the city's blue-collar demographic. Iron City was also an innovator. It was one of the first in the country to use aluminum cans, introducing them in 1962. This move not only modernized its packaging, but also catered to a growing consumer demand for convenience and durability in beverage containers. Economic downturns and shifts in the manufacturing landscape of Pittsburgh also impacted local businesses, including breweries. Today, while Iron City beer is not as dominant as it once was, it remains a beloved brand in Pittsburgh, holding on to its legacy through continued local support and nostalgia. It's the water oak that makes it only beer. It's the water. Olympia Beer, established in 1896 in Tumwater, Washington, gained prominence in the 60s as a beloved regional beer of the Pacific Northwest. Known for its slogan, It's the Water, this phrase highlighted the pure artesian water used in its brewing process, which was believed to enhance the beer's flavor and quality. During the 60s, Olympia beer enjoyed widespread popularity due to its reputation for quality and its effective marketing strategies. It was not just a local favorite, it was distributed across the United States, finding fans far beyond its Washington roots. Olympia beer was commonly seen at sporting events and outdoor activities, aligning the brand with a sense of adventure and natural purity that resonated with many Americans. Changes in ownership, with the brewery being sold multiple times, started in the 80s and continued into the 2000s. Each transition brought changes in production practices and corporate focus, which eventually led to a decline in the brand's prominence and connection with its roots. As of the early 2020s, production of Olympia beer has been put on hold, with its future uncertain. Oh, a whole herd of Rainier beers. Not herds, Audrey. Rainiers come in six packs. Oh, Wake up, Harley. Harley, Harley, look at the Rainiers. Rainier beer a brand synonymous with the Pacific Northwest, particularly Seattle, saw its heyday in the 60s. Founded in the late 19th century, Rainier became a regional favorite due to its distinctive branding and local brewing. The iconic red R and the mountain logo were inspired by Mount Rainier, a key landmark, linking the beer to its Washington roots. In the 60s, Rainier Beer was known for its quirky and memorable advertising campaigns, which often featured humorous and sometimes bizarre TV commercials. These ads helped establish a fun, laid-back image for the beer, resonating with a young, vibrant audience. Rainier was also involved in local community events and was a common sight at sporting events and festivals, further embedding itself into local culture. This local focus made Rainier not just a beer, but a part of the Pacific Northwest's identity. 
By the late 90s, ownership changes and shifts in consumer preferences towards craft beers began to erode Rainier's market share. Although it is no longer brewed in Seattle, Rainier beer still exists today, but with a much reduced presence, primarily appealing to those with a nostalgic connection to the brand. Did any of these classic brews from the 60s bring back memories for you? Drop us a comment below to share your favorite beer moments from back in the day, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more blasts from the past. Cheers to revisiting the good old days, one sip at a time.